making history as the first black cast to ever play the Lohman family on Broadway in Arthur Miller's classic Death of a Salesman. Woo! Please welcome Wendell Pierce, Sharon D. Clark, Chris Davis, and McKinley Belcher III. Yeah! Waiting for you. Oh, this what? Is great. Yeah. You are here. You are here. So, Wendell, you were yes. the first black cast to play <laughs> the Loman family on Broadway. Yes. Even that, that, that phrase, the first, what does that mean to you? Well, what it says is uh, really um, the cultural ignorance of not understanding how we are a diverse society and that people hadn't allowed us to speak our voice and sing our unsung heart songs. And so now we have an opportunity to, to do it. Yeah. You know, Sharon, I know you and Wendell were in London when you first did the play. So now you're over here in America. America, honey. In, in American theater. I, is it different? It's different from the West End in the fact that um, a Broadway audience is more vocal. <laughs> it's more like the audiences that we have in, say, places like the Hackney Empire or Theatre or Stratford East, which are more black areas, where they let you know. Uh -huh. So you get, ooh, ooh, and, ooh, and no, and no, and no, <laughs> don't do it, girl, and all that. Yeah. It's very vocal. It's watching like, like they're watching telly, and they're on the journey with you, and that's wonderful to hear that the audience is with you. Yes, when, when they, yes. And it's also like you know you're touching us in a certain place. Yes. When you're on that stage. You're in the story. If the audience is in the story, then we are doing our jobs. And if they feel that they have to come in, like when Wendell picks up the lighter and someone goes, no, don't uh, do it. She screamed, <laughs> from the, no. she screamed from the top balcony. She said, no, don't do it. Yes. And that's when you're like, yes, you're on the journey with us. That's what we want. We can hear you. As performers, we can hear you on stage, and we love to have that feedback. Oh, wow. And I do want to say, before I go on, congratulations, because you won the Olivia Award out there, and you were nominated, yes. Wendell, for the Olivia yes. Award. So congratulations to both of you. Thank you, thank you very now, much. Now, you know, we have four chairs here, but we're missing Broadway actor Andre DeShields. He couldn't legend. make it. He the is icon. the legend and the icon. <laughs> <laughs> couldn't make it. <laughs> Okay, but be honest, y'all. Y'all know if Andre DeShields were here, he would show everybody up yeah, with absolutely. the outfits. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, you, you can see that. You can see <laughs> He's got wings on his, on his he heels. He's man. got wings yes, on his shoes. Literally. And, and I saw, I, I saw uh, a, a few pictures of you on the red carpet with Andre. Do you ever feel like you're just completely underdressed with Andre? Every day. <laughs> Andre is magic. We are know? all like, when we grow up, we want to be Andre DeShields. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's just... Style epitomized. Yeah. Styling and profiling. Well, well, Andre, we are missing you. Yeah. We should have had a chair right here. We're missing you, Andre. <laughs> now, now, Chris, you actually rang the bell over uh, in, at NASDAQ. We you, did, yeah. And, and how was that when you rang that bell? Well, uh, it was uh, very surreal, but it was a full circle moment for me because I used to work at NASDAQ. Wow. Yeah, um, yeah, here I am. Well, <laughs> here, here's the thing. I was working at NASDAQ as a caterer. Uh, <laughs> serving coffee and donuts and uh, milk and tea. Uh, yeah, but uh, uh, all jokes aside, it was, it was a full circle moment where, you know, you have dreams. Yeah. You see the image in your head, but you can never really see how you're going to get there. Mm -hmm. And never in a million years would I have ever thought that I'd be back at NASDAQ but ringing the bell with my Broadway camera. Wow. And some days I would do a turnaround where I would go home, I'd get home at around like 1.30 in the morning, I would read my sides for my audition for about a half an hour, I'd lay down and I'd get up at five o'clock to be at NASDAQ at 6.30 to get the coffee and prepare the tea and the donuts and everything for people to ring the bell for uh, opening bells or IPOs and things like that. So once I got out of there, I was home free. I was like, I'm never coming back here again to cater. <laughs>
but never would I have thought that I'd be back there uh, and welcomed so graciously by my friends who still do work there and they welcome me with open arms. They gave me so much love and so much support and I love them all and for the support they gave me over the years and I'm very happy that I had And I'm experience. sure you inspired them. Yeah. I, I sure hope so. I, sure, I surely do hope so uh, because we're all trying our best, you know, yeah. and uh, it's, a, it's a hard gig to be an actor, as you know, yeah. so we do what we can, but I do feel very blessed to have had this experience. Oh my goodness. <laughs> You had that experience, and McKinley, you brought your mom to the show. I did. The, the, it, it, how was that? I know having my parents anywhere I am and performing for them is something special. How was it to have your mother in the show watching you? It was really beautiful. Yeah. It's like we're doing this play about family and, and like the struggle of loving each other in a family, how beautiful and, and challenging that is sometimes. And she said this thing about seeing the play that she's like, and with tears in her eyes, she was like, I never knew how much real life could be in a play. Ooh. And it just meant that she saw herself in the play. And, and so yeah. like, that's a beautiful thing to share with your mom. This is something that, you know, you have a lot of visitors coming to the play. You yes. have uh, people just, it's just loving it. Has anybody stood out to you, um, you know, coming to see Death uh, of a Salesman? It was great. I mean, uh, so many people have come through. Angelina Jolie. We've had nice. uh, Vincent D'Onofrio. We had uh, Jessica Chastain. We had uh, Norman Lewis. We had Uzo uh, come through. And... Uh, but and I remember Carl Weathers was there the first night. Oh my goodness! Uh, my, man, my man Chris is mad at me. He said you didn't tell me it was the first <laughs> night. You didn't tell me Carl Weathers came. And it, it, it's been great. But the thing that stands out to me the most is uh, this woman who came from Florida, 100 years old, and wow. she waited for me outside the theater, uh, and she said I saw the original production in 1949. Really? And I've seen every subsequent production on Broadway. And I just wanted to wait and see you because I want to say how much you moved me. Mm. Right? And I've seen this wow. play. And that, that to me was the greatest, the greatest uh, so reward. With her seeing everybody, she saw Dustin Hoffman and George yes, C. Saw, Scott uh, yes. and Brian Dennehy and, he, uh, and Philip Seymour Hoffman Philip Seymour and Hoffman. the original Lee J. Uh, Cobbs. Wow. Know? So she saw all five men who had done it before, and I joined a small fraternity of men who have done the play on Broadway, and now it's history, you know? Mm -hmm. Now I'm a part of history. I've made my mark as I pass on this road. Yes, you are. Now, up next, more with the cast of Death of a Salesman, and they have a big surprise, so don't miss it. We are back with the history-making cast of Death of a Salesman. Woo! You know, now, Wendell, you have a very gut-wrenching character. You go the highs and the lows, the ups and the downs. You are all over the place with your emotions. Yes. It takes you there. How do you just shake that off when oh. you're done? Yeah, it's, uh, it's, you spend the evening um, being challenged emotionally, physically, uh, psychologically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this is the first time in any production I've ever done where I said, you really have to separate yourself from the role. Before, I used to think, oh, I hear actors all the time, oh, you know, oh, I have to separate myself. <laughs> I don't know. I was like, man, when the curtain comes down, you go home, you have a drink, and it's over, you know? <laughs> But, uh, uh -huh. Uh -huh. but with this, this was the first time that self-care was very important. So for me, it started in London. I would finish the show, and I'm up all night, right? And I yeah. sleep all day. Uh, but I would go out and hear music. Go and hear music every night. I'm a big jazz head. So, uh -huh. but here, uh, close to the theater, there's this nice little salsa place, right? Really? And some live music. That I love to go, and uh, I have a cocktail, an adult beverage, and, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and then do a little dancing and listening uh, to uh, some beautiful, beautiful music going into the night. And I go to uh, Jazz at Lincoln Center also. Uh, I just go and hear music all night long. And, then, and it helps you, know, you wind down. Wind down, just really center myself again, and then go to sleep peaceful instead of craze because, you know, it can be a very emotional play. Because you're doing, and, and again, I say this is a limited run. You're going till January 15th. Yes. But you have to get up, you have to do eight shows a eight, week. Eight shows a week, yes. Eight shows a week, and you have to get, get so after yes. you go salsa, but then you got to get up and get that, that emotional. Yeah, you know, absolutely, absolutely. People, people always uh, in the cast, is like, are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> 
They check on me every day. They take care of me. <laughs> They're like, are you okay? You know, so that's it. Well, this is the one thing about being on Broadway, and it's such a family. And Sharon, you and Wendell are husband and wife in Death of a Salesman. And you, the chemistry I that boo. you have. That's your boo. <laughs> you have such amazing chemistry on that stage. Did you two know each other before you started the play? We had never met. Wow. Really? Um, but we do have a mutual friend, Clark. And you've been working a lot with Clark. Yeah, I, and... I worked. Clark Peters was on uh, The uh, Wire. The Wire. Yeah. So, Wendell had been working with Clark, and I've known Clark since I was 17. Okay. Mm. So, Clark, I rang Clark and said, this guy, Wendell, what's he like, man? <laughs> and Wendell had done and the I called and I said, hey, this, this woman, Sharon, what's she like? <laughs> and Clark just went, I love you both. You'll be absolutely fine. And from the first day we met, it was just love. Yeah. Just a love thing. Mm. You take care she, of each other. She, she literally took care of me in London on and off the stage. She's one of the kindest, most generous souls uh, on this earth. And I love her dearly. I love you too. Woo! It's real. This is not, he's got me a little emotional for over here. <laughs> it's the name Sharon. It's the, it's the, it's it's the, the name, name Sharon. Yes, Sharon. That's yeah. it. Sharon, Sharon yeah, just beautiful. makes you emotional, whether you're in the audience or whether you're in the cast. <laughs> it's the name Sharon. <laughs> now, McKinley, Broadway is so special to you around this time of year. Is that, is that, you know, is, 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 is just, and I know, uh, <laughs> when you're working with Sharon, like, were you afraid that your mother would, would uh, get a little bit jealous? I wasn't, but I think uh, Chris was. <laughs> <laughs> I, was I, I was, because I give her these, this, this big hug and these, uh, these kisses on her face. And yeah. I kiss and hug my mom a lot, actually, and uh, she's a lot smaller than me, so I like to tower over her and, <laughs> and I do that to her so I was afraid that when my mom came and saw the play and she saw me doing that to Sharon that she would get upset and she would get jealous because I'm holding her with such love and care right. yeah. that I didn't want my mom to feel like I was giving away her special love and care. Oh. <laughs> now I did want to say for the, for those of you know, with, with Broadway it's it's here it's the holidays it's a special time for people who don't know why they should go and see Death of a Salesman what would you say to them? Mm. It, it's beautiful because I'm looking in this audience right now and I see so many beautiful brown and black faces and yeah. there, there's a thing about telling stories on Broadway it's like the biggest in this country the biggest way of doing a play yeah and uh, it's a way of propping something up and saying it's important. And doing this play on Broadway is a way of saying our families, our dreams, our struggles are important and worthy. And it's a way of saying you are worthy. So, so come on out and see us. <laughs> you are worthy and January 15th, come see it before it closes because it's a limited run. You must go see that this. This is, this is also, it's American story, but it's our story as well. Yes. I want to thank you so much for coming by, Sharon Wendell. Thank you. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you for just showering us with your love. And I want to say, studio audience, you're all getting tickets to Death of a Salesman. <laughs> Sherry Christmas! <laughs>